Hey Pyro, who else is ready for summer? I know I am, and one of my favorite places to go in the summertime is the mountains or the forest. So for this month's Crate Club, we are doing a mountain forest scene. And if you are not part of the Crate Club, it's basically a project in a box that gets sent to your door. All you need is your burner and a couple of extra little tools, but you get all the materials to make a project from start to finish. If you have the Crate Club, then you'll have all the materials you need to make this beauty. If you're not a part of the Crate Club and you wanna be, you can sign up right here, crateclub.burnsavvy.com. There's nothing like bringing a little bit of the mountains and the forest into your home, am I right? And when this is all done, if you find out you really enjoy shading, then I've got a couple of different recommendations for you, definitely another video for you to watch that you are not going to want to miss, so stick with me till the end. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your pyro professor here on Burn Savvy. Let's burn. For this project, we are using a large 12 inch basswood circle. We'll be using a sanding block, some scissors, carbon paper, a tracing tool. If you don't have this, you can use a pen or a pencil, some tape, of course your pattern, and a hammer to hammer in the nails for your sawtooth hanger. You will also need polycrylic and a paintbrush. And you will also need your burner. And if you are looking to upgrade your burner, I can definitely give you a recommendation. My favorite burner is in the description. There's a link to it. It's the Colwood Detailer. It's my absolute favorite machine. And I do have a discount code for you. It's coupon code SAVVY, S-A-V-V-Y. The first step is to sand it. Now, you probably wanna decide which side of the piece of wood that you wanna use. This one has some interesting little markings on it, but I'm not sure that that's gonna blend in super well with my pattern. So I'm gonna turn it over. So I'm just gonna give that a quick sanding. Now you don't have to sand, sanding is optional, but I find that I burn so much faster when I knock off all the little tiny pieces of splinters that come up. Next, it's time to trim your pattern to the right size. Make sure that when you trim your pattern that you are <laughs> trimming it so that you can have space at the top to tape it down. I find it so much easier if you cut it into a rectangular shape or a square shape that it's a lot easier to tape it down. And the reason for that is because you don't want to tape every side down. You want to be able to lift it up and put it back exactly where it was. Now it's time to transfer the pattern and you're going to want to use your carbon paper and your tracing tool or your pen or pencil, whatever you're using. And by the way, these are in the wood burning tools and accessories kit. So if you got this, but you didn't order this, this is a really, really great tool. Uh, the wood burning tools and accessories kit has a whole bunch of awesome little tools that I use all the time. You wanna take the carbon paper, shiny black side down and dull gray side up. Put it between the wood and the pattern and then transfer over the pattern. And what you're gonna do is just trace over the pattern and that's going to transfer right there. As you go along, it's a really good idea to just check your progress and make sure that you didn't miss anything. So you can see where you have transferred over the pattern and where you haven't. Trace over this lightly, by the way. You don't need this to be crazy dark. So you can see that I've got the pattern transferred lightly over. I did trace this one really darkly, and so I will be burning that a little bit darker. And I can be burning all of these a little bit more, um, a, a little bit darker, but I like to keep it a little bit light so that in case I don't burn over that, I can erase it. So depending on the style of burner that you have, I would recommend nibs similar to one of these. If you have a solid point burner, you'll probably want to use a shading point or a leaf tip or the universal point or the chisel point or this diagonally cut cylinder. 
And if you have a wire nib, I would recommend a shading point. And you can typically get a larger one like this or a smaller one like this. Since it's a larger project, I'm going to mostly be using the larger shader, but use whatever you've got. Now, before you burn your actual piece, make sure you do some practice and make sure that you are getting the kind of shading that you want. And you'll wanna make sure that it's at a heat level that will burn the wood nice and dark and then also burn it lighter. So that for me was a little bit slow, but if you're just starting out, it's best to go light, low, and slow. Now for me, I'm using a Colwa detailer. I'm at a level five, which is kind of a medium heat. And so that is going to give you this result. If you are on a different burner, turn the burner heat up or down in order to get that kind of shading, okay? If you don't have heat control, uh, first of all, I recommend to upgrade your burner and get heat control. It's a, such a game changer. Get some kind of a temperature gauge or a rheostat. If you don't have one of those though, you have to rely on your speed. So right now I just turned my heat up and you can see how black that burned. And what you wanna do is you will have to move faster in order to get the lighter burns and slower in order to get those darker burns. Okay, you're gonna have to rely on your skill and your speed. But if you have that heat control, just go ahead and turn it to a heat level that you are comfortable with. I just turned mine up to about a six. However, this practice piece is poplar and the piece that we're working on is basswood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it slightly lower than what I think I will need. So this is at a six. What I'll probably do is turn it down to about a five. The other thing you want to do is practice scumbling. Now scumbling is circular motions. So if I were to make this big, they're like big circles. And I'm doing it on a very small scale. When you feel ready, it's time to burn the real thing. Again, you want to start slightly lighter than you need. The first thing we're going to do is block in the edges of the mountains, okay? And what we'll do is we'll trace over it with the sharp edge of the nib on the outside of the mountain. So the sharp edge is gonna go on this side of the mountain and then we're gonna twist it and do it on that edge of the mountain, okay? And you can turn your wood, it's a whole lot easier than turning your pen and fighting the cord. So this is lower than what I used on the practice piece of wood, right? Which is about a level six is where I was happy burning. So I'm gonna turn it down to about a five. And then I'm going to use the touch stroke and the pulling stroke to trace those in. Seeing how slowly I burned that, that's a really great pace if you're just starting out and getting to know your technique. Once you've got your technique down, you can start speeding up a little bit. So for me, I am going to turn up the heat a little bit so I can work at a faster pace. And again, you're keeping that sharp edge on the outside of the mountain and the soft edge on the inside. <laughs> we're gonna block in the shadowed parts of the mountain. And all we're gonna do is turn this so that the sharp edge of the nib is going to be against the middle of the mountain. And we're gonna do that with all of the shadowed parts. Now you'll probably notice that my lines are not perfect. That's actually perfect <laughs> because real mountains are imperfect. And so if you have a few little blobs, a few little things, that's okay. 
this is perfect for that. What you want is to have some depth to it, some life to it. And that's what those slight imperfections do. So now we're going to, again, keep it at this angle or whatever angle you're comfortable working at. I like to pull it towards me and I'm going to just pull slightly downward to kind of blend that shadow out into the rest of the mountain. And one of the best motions to use for this is the scumbling motion. What that's going to do is give you a little bit of a rough texture. So again, we're doing those circular motions. Then we're going to blend these out. So what you want to do is take that shadow, kind of blend it a little bit more towards the side of the mountain. This one's pretty close to that edge, but this one I want to fade out a little bit more so that it's a wider shadow at the top and it goes to a smaller shadow towards the bottom. Same over here. And then I'm going to pull in very lightly this side of the mountains. And the last thing you want to do is add just a little bit of shadow. So since this mountain is behind both of these, I'm going to add a slight shadow coming up from this mountain and up from this mountain. If you are enjoying this so far, it would be incredible if you would hit that little like button. That helps this video to get in front of other pyros who might enjoy this project also. It's a simple and free way to give back and I really appreciate it. Thanks pyro. Now down to the trees, we are going to do a slightly different stroke. Now you can outline it all the way and then just fill it in like we showed you, or you can outline it and bring out the taper out those edges so that it looks a little bit more natural. Totally up to you whether you want to use this technique or this technique. We're going to take this little hill and keep the sharp edge on the edge of that line and pull that down. Then we're going to pull down some little shadows under the trees. Remember to adjust your heat if you need to. I'm going to turn this down to about a level five. Again, that's my medium heat and that's going to get me closer to this look rather than this look. Okay, less dark a little more toasty. And I'm just going to do a little scumbling under each tree. If you enjoyed this is project, to nail the sawtooth hanger in place. Now I lined up my artwork so that it would be in line with the wood grain and that makes adding the sawtooth hanger really easy. If you decide to measure it, that's just fine, but I am going to just estimate and I feel like that's pretty good. And then instead of holding these nails with my fingers, I'm gonna use pliers to hold the nail and then tap it into place with my hammer. Then I'll do the same thing on this other side. 
nice and sturdy. Now it's time to add the sealant. I'm going to put down a little piece of cardboard just to protect the surface. Then I'm going to open up my polycrylic sealant. I'm going to use my paintbrush to stir it up and then apply the first coat. I like to wrap my brush in a plastic bag so that I can just use it again without having to rinse it out between coats. Let that dry for two hours. Then it's time to sand it one more time and give it another coat. If you enjoyed this project, I've got a couple recommendations that you are going to love. First of all, you need to check out the brand new Burn Savvy channel membership. That just launched. It's so exciting. The white hot level of the Burn Savvy channel membership has shading tutorials that I'm adding to it to create a library. And these videos are not available to the public. I'll have a link in the description for you and a link here on the video for you to be able to join because you are going to love it. And secondly, I highly recommend that you watch this video next because this one shows you all about how to shade cacti and succulents. It's another really fun project that a lot of people are enjoying right now. So those are my two recommendations. I say do both. <laughs> and I will see you in the next project. Later, Pyro.